Do you think Bill Gates thinks there's a box? Or Warren Buffett? Do you think Muhammad Ali ever thought there was a box? And what would you think if Tiger Woods or Roger Federer thought that they had to operate within some kind of box? Very often I hear business leaders, I don't mean the people whose names we all know, I mean normal business leaders, talk about thinking outside the box. The phrase is normally used in relation to problem solving or innovation. Lots of people like to talk about it. Almost no one is ever prepared to rise to what in fact really isn't much of a challenge at all. Because if you know how to do it, you will realise that in fact there is no box. In reality of course there is no box other than the box that we create for ourselves. From a very early age, society and education begins to fashion that box for us. But we're all in the box together, so it seems okay. It seems acceptable. Get yourself a good education. And of course, Bill Gates dropped out of college. Or get yourself a good job, like Sir Richard Branson setting up Student Magazine when he was 16. And of course, when you do get yourself a good job, you're told to be a team player which is a euphemism for don't do anything that would upset anyone else on the team, and for God's sake, don't do anything unusual or innovative. Play by the rules. And of course, then there's the whole issue of corporate culture. This is how we do things around here. Corporate culture is now a multi-million dollar industry. I know consultants who make a fortune out of it. One has even come up with a way of auditing corporate culture, whatever that means. But of course, as I said, corporate culture simply means this is how we do things here. Conform. No innovation, nothing unusual. So this is the box. The one throughout your life you have effortlessly slid into with all the other clones. All the other people around you who wander mindlessly through life. Talking about thinking outside the box when you and I know that most people will never ever get there. Never mind thinking outside the box. What about actually living outside the box? The Buddha did, although it took him some time to actually figure out how. And some of the people we've already mentioned, they must have some inkling too about what it's like to live outside the box. Of course, some of those have only done it in relation to certain aspects of their lives. You and I can do it right across the board. How? Well, does sitting on the toilet give you a hint? You need to give yourself space and time to do a little nothing. The Buddha became enlightened when he was sitting under a tree, doing nothing. And Sir Isaac Newton made his greatest discovery while he was also sitting under a tree, doing nothing. The most effective way of being inspired of having groundbreaking ideas, of innovatively solving problems, is to take one step back from what you're doing, to calm down, to slow down, to give your mind the time it needs to be inspired. You need to calm down and slow down and build that space into every day of your life. Now, I'm not talking about power napping. I'm not talking about meditating in the conventional sense. I'm actually talking about you setting a little time aside to do absolutely nothing. All my clients do nothing regularly. That could be sitting by a river, sitting outside your office on the canal bank, having a coffee in a pavement cafe, simply finding somewhere to sit down and watch the world go by. In that space, you may actually find new ideas popping into your head. You will find the solutions to problems. In that space, you may be amazed at what you'll find. The one thing you will fully realise is that there never was any box.